What's up, Kyle Gay? Welcome back to Dynamics. So let's go ahead and solve this problem. So it's kind of a long one. We have a ball with a mass of 0.5 kilograms, and we're throwing it at a wall, and it's gonna bounce off the wall, and it's gonna go this distance S. So our goal is to find the velocity at which it strikes the wall, kinematics problem. The velocity at which it rebounds with, right, it's gonna bounce off the wall, and that's what we're given this coefficient of restitution for, so that's an impact problem. Then finally, we're finding the distance S at which it travels. So we can go ahead and start with this. So let's start with part A, just a simple kinematics problem. So let's write out what we now, right? Let's write VA in vector form, right? So we want it in I and J. So if we want to find the X component of VA, we're going to take that 10 meters a second, cosine of 30, right? So 10 cosine of 30 to get the X component. And then its I component is going to be 10 sine of 30 this time. So over here, we can go ahead and write VA as a vector. That's going to be 8.66i plus 5j, and this is the meters per second. So now that we have this, we got to now go ahead and let's break it up. So our goal is to find the height here, right? Let's, let's first find this height. Because if we can find that height, we can find the change in speed of VA from here to here using, you know, our kinematics equations. So let's find the time it takes to hit the wall. So if we're looking for the time it takes, let's use the x direction, because the velocity of the x direction is going to be constant. So we can find time using the equation velocity is equal to change in x over change in time. So right, because we're constant, this is working, so we can have delta t is equal to that velocity in the x direction over the change in x. So we know we're traveling three meters to the wall, so that x is going to be three. And our x component is 8.66, so it's going to be 8.66 over 3. And then we can find the time it takes to hit the wall, delta t is equal to 0.346 seconds. Okay, so we have that important piece of information. We can now find the change in height using the other equation. So we can use the equation to find the change in height. Uh, y is equal to y naught plus velocity y t minus one half gravity times squared. So that's why we found time, so we can use this equation. We're trying to find that final height. So let's plug in our initial height, 1.5, plus velocity in the y direction is five, times time is 0.346. Then we're minusing one half gravity, so that's 4.905, times squared, 0.346 squared. So we're gonna find this, uh, let's label this height. So we can find that that height that it hits the wall is going to be uh, it's going to be 2.64 meters. So we went from 1.5 meters to 2.64 meters. So now this is where the coefficient, uh, or not yet, we need to find out the velocity uh, at which it hits the wall. So we know that the x component of the velocity is going to stay the same. It's going to be that 8.66, but the y component is going to go down because it goes up in height. So to do that, we're going to use the kinematics equation. Velocity y final squared is equal to velocity y initial squared plus two gravity uh, distance, right? Delta y. Uh, and actually going to be sweet positive side there. Right, so here we go. So now we can take the square root, velocity y, not that, not what I meant to write. Velocity y is equal to the square root. So velocity y not squared, right? That's going to be 5 squared because it starts with that initial velocity of 5 in the y direction. We're going to add 2 times uh, negative 9.81. And then change in y, it's going to be that height, 2.64 minus our initial height, 1.5. All right, so plug this in. You get velocity final y. Uh, I guess velocity y, when it hits the wall, is going to be... 1.60 meters per second, All right? So now we have our final x component, uh, or our final y component. So now uh, if we want to go ahead and solve for it, we're going to say that our velocity final, or I guess when it hits the wall, it's going to be the square root of the x component and the y component. So the x component stays the same, 8.66 squared plus 1.60 squared. And we're going to find that that is equal to 8.81 meters per second. 
And of course, it's a, we want it as a vector, so we need to find the angle. So theta is going to be that inverse tangent of y over x. So we're going to take inverse tangent of the y component, 1.60, over the x component, 8.66. So then you do this, you get that that theta is equal to 10.5 degrees. Nice. So I'm going to go ahead and write that up here. So for part A, we have the final is equal to 8.8y. And theta is equal to 10.5. All right, so let's go ahead and plan the next part. So I'm using the coefficient of restitution to find the velocity at which the, wall or at which the ball bounces off the wall. So to do that, we're going to use the equation. E is equal to VA2 over negative VA1. So if you use the full equation for the coefficient of restitution, it's velocity A2 minus velocity B2 over velocity B1 or minus velocity A1. But of course, B is our wall in this case, and the wall is not changing velocities. The wall has a zero velocity initially, and has a zero velocity finally. So we can simplify it to this equation. Now, of course, VA2 is also going to be negative because it's going to go to the left, and let's specify that we're just looking in the x direction. Uh, the y direction is not going to have an effect with the coefficient of restitution in this problem. So plugging in our numbers, uh, we know what the E is, and we know what VA1x is, right? That's what we just solved for. Uh, it's this number here, 8.66. That's the velocity in the x direction as it the wall. So we can rewrite this. Those negatives are going to cancel. Is E velocity x1 uh, as equal to velocity x2. So then just plugging in our numbers, 0.5 for E, velocity x1, 8.66 as equal to velocity x2, and surprisingly, it's not just, it's just half of that, so it's going to be, I didn't write it down, is it? but it's 4.33. Uh, so, that's the speed at which it bounces off the wall. Of course, it's gonna be in the negative direction, so let's write this velocity. Velocity a2 as a vector is gonna be negative 4.33i, and it's got the same i component as we found here, 1.60. J meters per second. So then now what we need to do is find the uh, magnitude of this, so velocity two. I don't know why I'm using A. I guess we're no longer at A, so maybe I should stop using A. Velocity two, this is after it hits the wall, uh, is equal to the square root of the magnitudes of that, so 4.33 squared plus 1.60 squared. And you're gonna find that velocity two. I'm gonna go ahead and write it over here is equal to 4.62 meters per second. And that theta, again, you're gonna use uh, inverse tangent of y over x. So we know the y component is that 1.60, and that x component is 4.33. You're gonna find that that theta is 20.3 degrees, and that's pointing that way, you know, off the wall. All right, so now, moving on to part three, just another kinematics problem. We're gonna find the distance at which it travels. So, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this. And we're gonna find the distance. So the distance s, right? Similarly to how we found this height, we need to know, uh, basically, the distance on the x direction this time. So let's start with the time it takes to hit the ground. Uh, we know the vertical distance, right? We found h earlier. So we can find how long it takes to hit the ground using the equation. Y is equal to y naught plus velocity uh, y t uh, plus one half gravity times squared. So we, we know everything, but we don't know time. So y final, that's gonna be zero, because we're hitting the ground. Uh, y initial is our height, right? We found the height is 2.64 meters, is how long it takes us, or basically how far up we are at this point. Then velocity y, we know that is 1.60. And then minus one half gravity, 4.905 t squared. So now we have a quadratic equation. Uh, however you like to solve your quadratic equations, uh, I do negative, or you know, the quadratic equation. So to solve that, you're gonna find that this time is equal to 0 0.915 seconds. So this is how long it takes the ball to hit the ground after it bounces off. So then simply, if we want to find that distance, we're going to take uh, x is equal to 
velocity divided by time, right? Or not velocity divided by time, velocity times time. So x, or let's label this s because that's the distance we're traveling. S is equal to velocity in the x direction, 4.33. We're just gonna take it, we know we're going negative, so we're gonna get rid of that negative sign. Times that time, 0 0.915. We're gonna find that s is equal to 3.96 meters. And that's our final answer for part C. So there we go, we solved the whole problem. Uh, pretty cool. Uh, it's mostly just kinematics, right? Um, but we did a little bit of coefficient of restitution in there. So yeah, any questions, feel free to ask in the comments below. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace.